Big, big, big congrats on MLK FBI, Mr. Sam. It's an eye-opening look at our hero and the FBI. And then it's at once searing and emotional. A big congrats on that. Thank you. I love your picture, man. I love the king picture. <laughs> Thank Great. you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Now, first things first, please describe MLK FBI to our viewers in your own words. MLK FBI is a film that looks at the trajectory of Dr. King's struggle to fight for civil rights. As, and as he was doing that, he was being constantly monitored, wiretapped, and bugged by J. Edgar Hoover and the FBI, who saw him as a threat to the notion of how they defined American democracy. They wanted to discredit and destroy his reputation. And they tried to connect him to the Communist Party because of his relationship with a gentleman named Stanley Levinson. And when that didn't work, they learned from the taping and the bugging that he was having these extramarital affairs. So they felt that they could use that to destroy him. And when that didn't stick with the press, then they sent a letter to his wife, basically saying maybe he should consider killing himself and also sent her an audio tape of him supposedly in there having an affair with another woman. I mean, they were going to any lengths to destroy Dr. King. And it only stopped because King was assassinated on April 4th, 1968. That's right. And Mr. Sam, so you're an editor, producer, and has directed great documentaries in the past. So why MLK FBI? Give us a genesis of how the film came about. Well, it came about because the producer of the film, Bennett Dean, had read a book about, about Dr. King and, and the FBI being surveilled, and King being surveilled by the FBI. It was written by a gentleman named, historian named David Garrow. He gave me a copy of the book. I read it. I thought he was absolutely right. He said, this should be, should be our next film. And I happen to know David Garrow because he was one of my consultants when I was working on Eyes on the Prize too. So we reached out to David. He said yes to us optioning the book. We went to Pittsburgh where he lived and we spent four or five hours with him documenting him basically on film and audio, the whole story about King and the FBI and Hoover. Yeah. And then we went out to raise the money, which we're fortunate after about a year and a half, which is pretty fast with raising money for an independent documentary. We raised the money and we shot the rest of the interviews in the fall of 2019. Wow. And in making the film, did your perception of Martin Luther King Jr. change at all? Or perhaps what's the biggest discovery you have about the man and the hero? My, my perception really hadn't changed. I kind of knew that King was a much more complex person than just being the guy who did the I Have a Dream speech. Yeah. So I just felt that as a documentarian that, you know, I had a responsibility to sort of show the trials and tribulations that Dr. King faced on a daily basis, both in the civil rights movement, both knowing the full well he was being monitored by the FBI, knowing full well he was having to deal with these extramarital relationships, knowing full well at a certain point by 1967, he would come out against Vietnam and doing the, the, the pushback he would get not only from you know, this other civil rights constituencies, but also from the FBI, from the LBJ and the, F, and, the, and, the, and, the and the Johnson administration. What I noticed in the film that I actually like, you just hear your interviewees, but not see them until the very end. An interesting technique for a documentary. And it actually reminds me of um, like another powerful film, the audio recordings of the Black Power mixtape, for example. I mean, tell <laughs> us why and how you chose that style. Well, that inspired me, Manny. That film inspired me. I saw that film in 2011, 2012. Yeah. And I said, wow, that's a great way to make a film. And as you probably have seen the past couple of years, more filmmakers are making films where they don't put the people on camera. There's a new film out by R.J. Cutler about Belushi that does the same thing. There's a new film also out about Bruce Lee. They do it the same approach. Nobody's on camera. So it's, a, it's a become a new technique. And they'll have to, we'll have to figure out another technique for my next film that makes it super <laughs> unique. That's right. Now I was just going to say, you know, you'll be needing a lot more footage, right? To cover <laughs> <laughs> the talking heads. Um, but the visual grip of the archival footage trumps the talking heads, right? Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, that's what that's one of the rationales for doing it because the visual footage just really engages you. And I was saying to someone that some of that footage looks so good, which I've seen so many times. But obviously this archival producer, Brian Becker, found some sources where they made the footage look even better than it's ever looked before. So it, you know, it was important to keep the audience in the film. That's why we didn't want to go to Talking Heads. 
Well, I also love your usage of Hollywood films and how those movies helped shape the misrepresentation of African-American men in the eyes of the FBI. Call it the FBI gaze, if you may. <laughs> right? It's a good phrase, man. But, you know, I, I had suggested a lot of those old feature films because I had seen them all. You know, uh, Walk a Crooked Mile. I was a communist for the FBI. Big Jim McClain with, J with John Wayne. The FBI story with Jimmy Stewart. So I'd seen all those films, and I knew how they had shaped the mythology of the FBI. Yeah, and really, they're mostly just propaganda movies about the FBI. That's all they are, propaganda, man. Yeah. Now, what do you hope for viewers to get after watching MLK FBI On Demand? This is what I hope. I hope that they'll look at this film and say, it's so resonant of what's happening in America today. And, and that history repeats itself. And if you're smart, you'll try to understand that it does. And sometimes you want to help to make some changes so history won't repeat itself all the time. You know, but sadly, as we saw yesterday, history repeated itself. That's, I was just going to say that, you know, Martin Luther King Day is almost here. Our world is almost in shambles with all the misinformation. What happened yesterday with the takeover of the of capital? Repression is still very much present. Equality is still a problem. And that's why I'm saying MLK FBI is very much relevant now, right? Exactly. Right. Absolutely relevant today. You know, it's, 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 it's frightening and angry to realize that something that happened so many years ago would have such resonance now in America. That's right. It's seeing those pictures of the Capitol during that time. And now it's like, oh my God. I mean, it's just. I know. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, a big, big, big congrats on MLK FBI again, Mr. Sam. It humanizes Martin Luther King Jr. And I absolutely love it. And please continue making your civil rights documentaries. Thank you very much, Manny. Be good. Have a good day. All right. Thank you. You too. Have a great day. <laughs>